thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. It's an exciting day. Uh, we put out the beta preliminary economic assessment on Wildcat and Mountain View, the two assets um, that were part of the merger with Integra Resources uh, earlier this year. Uh, joining me today on the call is Jason Kosak, uh, President Director and CEO of Integra. Uh, Jason will be uh, leading the presentation. Uh, Raphael Duteau, who's the Vice President of Exploration. And Jason Banducci is the Vice President of Corporate Development. Um, the company has planned a brief presentation on the PEA that was released this morning, and then we'll open up the webinar for questions. Uh, please note your microphones have been muted. If you would like to ask a question, please use the chat feature in Zoom. If by chance we don't get to all of the questions, please feel free to reach out at ir at integraresources.com and we'll be sure to get answers for you. The webinar will be recorded and posted to the company's website. Um, panelists today will be making forward-looking statements. I encourage you to please refer to the news release and the company website to review appropriate disclosure. With that said, we'll hand it off to Jason, who will take you through a brief presentation before the question and answer session. Good morning, Jason. Uh, thanks, Josh. Thank you very much, everyone, for, for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate uh, your time. Um, today, as Josh mentioned, we're just going to do a, a quick overview on the PEA, on, a, on the summary and kind of the next steps forward. I just want to highlight one thing, though, and, and, it, and it's very important to us. The objective of this PEA was really to remove a lot of the showstoppers that commonly plague projects like this. Uh, and those being, you know, what is the met metallurgy? What is the conversion? What is the geotech? And what are the fundamental controls and mineralization? And the company has been able to deliver this PEA, you know, within a year and a half and only operating on a five acre permit on Mountain View and Wildcat. You've got to remember that those two projects combined are 27,000 acres. So this PEA is just really scratching the surface of what we truly believe is there. And over the coming, you know, 12 to 24 months, we believe as a management team that we can significantly grow that resource. So keep that in mind uh, as we go through the numbers. Um, as Josh mentioned, we will be making forward-looking statements. So I encourage everyone to read the full disclosure on the company's website. Um, really, what do we have in summary today, okay? We have an after-tax MPV at 1,700 of 310 million, a 37% IRR, an annual uh, gold production of 80,000 ounces per annum over 13 years. Though it should be noted over the first five years, the company will be producing just close to 95,000 ounces per annum. An all in sustaining cash costs of $973. These are high margin, high quality ounces in the best mining jurisdiction in the world. And an initial CapEx of 115 million. That gives us a CapEx to NPV ratio of 2.7, one of the best in, in the industry. Um, quickly, from the resource perspective, um, the team has done a fantastic job being able to grow this resource just operating on that five acre permit, okay? At Wildcat, there was a 23% increase uh, and at Mountain View, almost a 50% increase. So right now, uh, the resource is sitting at 1.75 million ounces of gold equivalent. Uh, you know, we grew that from the 2020 resource estimate from 1.2. And as I mentioned, just operating on that five acre permit. Why the resource estimate and the PEA model, well, we model the PEA, why the, the, the ounces contain ounces are, are slightly different, okay, is that in the resource estimate, we use a $1,700 pitch shell. In the PEA, we use a $1,200 pitch shell. And what we were doing is really trying to maximize the NPV. Those ounces are real. 80% of the resource is indicated, uh, unlike most PEAs where most of it is inferred. And really where we see the curve starting to flatten down, we're not really maximizing any more NPV, we're just adding more tons and ounces. So that's why the $1,200 pitch shell in the PEA was selected. So in the PEA right now, we're modeling 1.47 million ounces. Um, as I mentioned, uh, 1.47 is, is in the model. The life of mine payable is just over a million ounces. 
And uh, on an average ounce uh, per annum, we're, we're producing about 80,000 per annum over the 13 years. You do see here, though, a drop in the production profile. And we are going to touch on this later on in the presentation, but just keep that in mind. Um, that drop will be filled with all the exploration and, and resource growth that we, the company will, will add in the coming years. You know, every 10% adds an extra year of mining and almost $50 million in after-tax free cash flow. Okay, just to put that into perspective for everyone. Um, from a CapEx perspective, um, the initial CapEx of $115 million, a total CapEx over the life of mine, $305. That, that includes um, two pad expansions, one at Wildcat, one at Mountain View, and the initial CapEx at Mountain View of just over $50 million. From an operating perspective, um, you know, for a total uh, tons process, just over $8 a ton. Um, these are real numbers built on real quotes. We wanted to keep this project as simple, stupid as possible, okay? So, um, you know, really keeping the infrastructure close to, to the ramps. So the crushing circuit is right close to the ramp. Then it goes on conveyors. So really uh, keeping the fuel consumption low. The all-in sustaining cash costs of 956 uh, does include uh, all the expansion capital, okay, at both Wildcat and Mountain View. And then the all-in cost includes the initial CapEx at Wildcat and the initial CapEx at Mountain View. So as I mentioned, these are high margin ounces and the best mining jurisdiction in the world, okay? Um, as you see here, just a quick summary again of, of the real economics and a quick three-year payback. This is at the base case scenario. You know, if you start running numbers um, at, at, at spot prices, they look much more attractive, uh, close to $450 million after-tax NPV and, and, and close to 50% IRR. As I mentioned, this is where the growth potential is going to fill in. Okay. Um, we strongly believe that as a management team, we can double the resource at Wildcat Mountain View. Um, now, to be, just be conservative with everyone out there, like I said, every 10% growth adds an extra year of mining uh, and will generate about $50 million a year in after tax free cash flow. So to grow the resource between 30 and 50% is completely feasible over the next uh, uh, you know, 12 to 24 months. Um, from a cash flow perspective, you see the initial CapEx hitting at, at Wildcat, then the pad expansion in year two, the initial uh, CapEx for Mountain View, the pad expansion in the second year of Mountain View. And I'm, as I mentioned, this cash flow will be smoothed out with resource growth from, from both Wildcat uh, and Mountain View. Um, average after-tax free cash flow is about $46 million US and over a total life of mine, about 485 million, okay? On a sensitivity basis, uh, at spot prices at 1920 today, as I mentioned, 442 million and 50% IRR. Really, where can we see the, the opportunities and value enhancements, okay? Um, as everyone knows, there's two types of permits in Nevada, okay? There's your five-acre permit, uh, which operates under a notice, and then your exploration plan of operations. Uh, the company did submit the exploration plan of operations at the end of last year. We expect to have that in, in the fourth quarter for Wildcat. And what that does is it allows us to go from five acres of disturbance to 400, 400 acres of disturbance. Um, we show in earlier last year that we've increased, so the footprint that is feeding this PEA is one and a half kilometers by one and a half kilometers. We now know the mineralized footprint based on surface samples and historical drilling is three and a half by two. That's why we strongly believe that we can significantly grow this resource. And this is just the starting point. Um, from a metallurgical perspective, uh, you know, we've done a lot of metallurgy, um, over 22 columns. 
Uh, over 184 bottle rolls. We've significantly de-risked this project from a MEP perspective. And that's what we wanted to, one of the things we wanted to do with this. Um, at Wildcat, there are some optimization work we can do to increase the permeability and increase the recoveries uh, on the heap leach pad. At Mountain View, we are very lucky that the rock is not susceptible to size fraction. So we can fluctuate the crushing size to reduce the, the, the operating costs. From a processing perspective, um, we are very lucky, okay, that um, we are using a valley fill pad. Uh, the, the walls of the valley actually are perfect for the valley fill. So you, you don't have enough, you don't have to resize the valley and the slope is actually perfect. So once it goes from the crusher, it'll go on a downhill convey um, um, platform and there's a, it'll probably produce a significant amount of power to offset some of the operating costs. We will also look at uh, sequencing optimization to look at input dumping. So to create further value from this PEA when we pu publish our, our, our feasibility, there's, there's a lot of accretive things that we can do as a team to better further the economics. Um, really what sets us apart from our peer group, okay, um, is right now we're sitting globally at 6.5 million ounces. Of that, 3.9 million ounces are leachable. Um, you know, making us the largest gold and silver resource endowment that's not owned by a major company. It should be noted, though, that uh, in September, October, we will have an updated resource at Delamar uh, that includes the 60 million tons of stockpiles that is not factored into the Delamar PFS. So we strongly believe that by the end of this year, we'll push this resource uh well above 7 million ounces and to continue to grow it um, with the exploration at Wildcat and Mountain View, um, separating us out, out from our peer group. Um, you see here in the scale bar on the right, these are all operating mines in, in, in the basin that are, that are making quite a bit of money, okay? And you look here, I think it's very important to know that, you know, grade is great, but margin is king. And one of the things that really goes into that margin is your strip adjusted grade. So how much waste rock do I need to remove to get to my ore? And when you look at that, uh, the Nevada projects have the highest strip adjusted grade uh, in the basin and inline recoveries with everything else in the basin. You know, Marigold does an amazing job. They operate at 0.13, um, but they're run of mine. So they don't have a three-stage crush like we do, and they're getting 75% recovery. Uh, Delamar is sitting at 0.28. We believe that we can get it up uh, quite a bit when we include the stockpiles, and recoveries are also in line with the rest of the basin. Okay, really, where are we creating value for, for everyone? Um, what we really went out to do go do uh, by doing this merger is cre to create the go-to vehicle uh, that has growth and scalability in the number one mining jurisdiction in the world. And when we do that, as you can see here, we will now be one of the largest uh, mid-tier producers in the basin, you know, averaging right now at about 216,000 ounces per annum. And obviously you see our evaluation uh, compared to our peer group. So there is a significant rewriting opportunity here as we further de-risk and permit uh, these projects. Um, as I mentioned, there's a severe scarcity for these projects, okay? Um, and really when you look at them uh, on, on a combined basis, you're looking at over 685 million uh, sorry, 624 million of combined U.S. now, okay? Um, companies commonly trade at 0.5 NAV. So on a combined basis, you're looking at right now at about at spot prices, 875 million of combined NAV. That's about $1.1 billion of net asset value between the two projects. And as I mentioned, Companies commonly trade at 0.5 to 0.7 in tier one jurisdictions. Right now, we're trading at 0.08 or 0.1.
So there's significant value to be unlocked here. Just so you know, the average acquisition costs for projects like this in this type of jurisdiction on a PNAV consensus basis are 0.89. We trade at 0.1 right now. And the average acquisition costs per ounce is $100. You know, we're going to be over 7 million ounces by the end of the year. So there's a severe scarcity for these projects. Not only are we the largest resource endowment, we will also be the next permitted project within the Great Basin. Um, you know, the other thing, um, we, we talked about this on, on the last corporate update that we had, but, you know, there's two things that commonly plague uh, development companies and, and single asset companies is, is, is one, you get into the trough here in the, in the Lasan curve, and there's a significant lack of use flow, okay? So the, the, by putting the two companies together, as we did in, in early May, created this nice diversified portfolio of assets. So while Delamar goes on this permitting timeline, Wildcat and Mountain View go through this exploration euphoria phase that Delamar did in 2018 and in 2019. Because as I mentioned, they've only been drilled on a five acre permit. So the beauty is, is that we get two, two years of really nice resource growth, a lot of news flow coming to the market through the drill bid, all in while we permit and de-risk Delamar. Quickly, um, from an exploration perspective, there is a number of targets at Wildcat, okay, and at both at Mountain View. Um, we are only looking right now at this little green circle here, okay? There are all these red dots sit outside the current uh, resource in the PEA. Um, other than that, too, you have holes like this that are 150 meters outside the pit shell. Uh, just so everyone knows, for inferred, we need 100 meter spacing. So because of the disturbance, we weren't able to put a hole right there to bring, extend the pit right out, okay? So there's a lot of low hanging fruit. And as I mentioned, you know, every 10% adds another 50 million in after tax free cash flow. Um, it's a lot easier to see it here for the near-term growth. As I mentioned, all these red dots are all surface samples and historical uh, drill holes that's really just outside the pit that have never been really been drilled. There's a number of underground targets. Remember, these are all low solvidation epithermals. So think about them as a mushroom. The fluid migrates up the stem, hits a more permeable horizon. And you have this nice disseminated cap with the high-grade plumbing system right below it. The high-grade plumbing system has never, ever been drilled. Um, you can see here, there's a lot of veins that sit underneath the, the, the current pit that we know that are exposed further in the valley, exactly like Delamar. Um, there's a beautiful high-grade breccia pipe that has never been touched that sits right outside the, the pit. Uh, it sits coincides with a beautiful mag low. Uh, these are all targets uh, that will be drilled in the next 20, 12 to 24 months once the exploration plan of operation uh, has been put in place. So as I mentioned, the growth potential uh, at Wildcat alone is significant and that'll continue to add value um, to, to the economics that we've shown you today. Uh, again, very similar thing at, at Mountain View, it's never been drilled with core. No one really understood the fundamental controls of mineralization. It's controlled by this hydrothermal breccia body um, that is basically brecciating this rhyolite. Um, what we now know is the plunge of the, this high-grade breccia is towards the northwest, right along this range front fault. Uh, extends for kilometers right into a historical old mine. The last hole, second last hole we drilled was 100 meters outside the pit. It was 40 meters of four grams. That hole is not in the pit. The next last hole that we drilled was a 250 meter step out. We got right into this breccia body, 17 meters of 0.6 and snapped the rods, unfortunately. So we will be going back. Uh, we will be extending the pit to the Northwest um, now that we understand the fundamental controls of mineralization, now that we understand the geotech 
and now that we um, understand the resource conversion as well. So what is up next uh, for, for the company? Okay, we, we just delivered our made in PEA uh, with robust economics. There's a lot of de-risking going involved here. Uh, we believe that we can continue to grow it through the drill bit. Uh, next up is the updated resource at Delamar, which will include all of the stockpiles uh, and then the mine plan of operations, which will be submitted at the end of the uh, at, at the end of this this year. Okay, all in while we'll continue advancing the engineering uh, and the feasibility work uh, at Delamar. Uh, so, in summary, really you get the largest uh, resource endowment that's not owned by a major mining company in the Great Basin a production profile that will push well over 200,000 ounces. These are high quality, high margin uh, uh, ounces with um, extremely low CapEx. Um, we have significant financial partners from BD, from Wheaton and the largest institutions in the space. We currently also have $30 million in the bank. So we have uh, a significant amount of runway to to continue to execute our plan uh, in 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 the, in the coming quarters. Uh, with that, I'll open up the floor for for questions, um, and we'll take it from there. Perfect. Thanks, Jason. If uh, you do have any questions, please feel free to use the Q and A feature uh, through Zoom, uh, and we'll try to get to uh, as many as we can. Uh, one question, Jay, on on the phased approach to development at at Wildcat Mountain. Why did the, the company go down that road? Yeah, the biggest thing is what we really wanted to do is really have a low low initial capex. Okay, and by sharing uh, the the facilities and sharing the teams and, and, and sharing some of the equipment. The company was be able to save about seventy million dollars to, to to lower the capex, and as large shareholders as myself, we're very cognizant of uh, of dilution. Uh, so having a, a low initial capex and then building that production profile out of out, out of cash flow uh, really maximizes the return for share for shareholders. You know, we could have pushed it a pushed a higher tonnage. But when you push your higher tonnage, your capex goes up. So we wanted to, to really work on keeping a really low capex uh, right to start, and that's one of the reasons why we we, we shared uh, the equipment and, and shared facilities and shared teams. Perfect. And can you talk a bit more about the strip ratio difference between Wildcat and and, and Mountain View? Totally. So uh, I think that's one of the things uh, that, that really stands out here, okay, is that at Wildcat, what makes it work is the strip ratio is 0.28. There is literally minimal amount of waste rock, okay? Uh, the strip ratio at Mountain View is 3.41. Um, you can see, though, that 70% of the waste that is being moved, okay, is in the alluviums, okay? So what that means is that you're saving uh, about 30 cents a ton on your, on your operating costs. So about 20 million in, in OPEX because 70% uh, of that material is, is conducive to a free dig. So you don't have to drill and blast it, okay? So even though the strip is high, higher, okay, um, the operating cost to remove the alluviums is 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 much lower. Great, and uh, a follow up question on that one is: Can can you kind of go over a bit on the infrastructure? Uh, what what do you need from power, mobile equipment, uh, water at, at Wildcat and Mountain Dew? Yeah, so each project will have its own pits, pads, ponds. Uh, right now, what we will be using a three-stage crushing circuit. It's a mobile crushing circuit, so will be moved from Wildcat to Mountain View. Uh, it will have a shared ADR plant. Uh, what we are we are unfortunately off grid here, so we we will be having a, 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 our own LNG plant on, on, on site as well. And a single fleet is that 
Yes, yeah, so it'll, it'll be a single fleet. Um, they're 90 ton trucks, 200 ton shovels. Okay, so the fleet will be moved from Wildcat to Mountain View. Perfect. And uh, a quick question just on, on water. Okay, so right now we just went through, well, Mountain View should be no problem having water. We're, we're in negotiations with that right now. Um, at uh, Wildcat, um, we just applied for our T finite permit. Uh, it went through the public consultation period uh, with no comments. So within the next year, year and a half, we should be permitted for just over 3,000 acre feet, which is sufficient to, to, to process this type of tonnage. Perfect. And uh, getting back to exploration. So um, clearly the BA demonstrates the economic viability of these projects, puts a pin in valuation. You know, if you could drill any of the targets right now, assuming you have the exploration plan of operations, got the increased disturbance, where, where do you drill and why? Yeah, so right away, uh, just to increase the economics at Wildcat, you would just be drilling marginal to the pit, okay? Um, after that, um, drilling the veins underneath the pit, drilling the, the actual diatreme, would be would be really a, a game changer. That's commonly where you have your best tonnage and your best grade. Um, a lot like uh, like a Forte del Norte or a Hishikari, uh, very very analogous to 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 that. Um, and really at uh, at Mountain View is just following this frontal range fault towards the northwest to all the historical mine, chasing this this high grade uh, breccia. You know this breccia is thirty meters. Uh, 20 to 40 meters wide and runs about three to four grams, okay? So you can increase uh, your ounce profile quite quickly. Um, and, you know, well, one thing I should have touched on is, is really the conversion rate, okay? Um, we're looking at 85 to 90% conversion rate on the tons and, and, and ounces, which is spectacular. Commonly, you know, you'd be lucky to get 60, 70. Perfect. And uh, a quick question on a recent corporate update, sort of a tangent here is you mentioned we in Precious Metals owning a trunk of the company and BD, but there was a news release about Franco. Uh, can you just take us through a bit about what that was about? Yeah. So obviously when we were running the process uh, with when we were doing our financing, we opened up the door to a number of, of royalty providers. Um and what that did was as it gave us obviously significant project validation and Franco was obviously involved in that process and really got excited about the growth potential and the economics at Mountain View and Wildcat. And most recently, Franco just purchased the royalty from Waterton. So what that was, was a half a percent at Mountain View, a half a percent at Wildcat and a 1% uh, on Dune, Eden, Mar, and Oslo. So we didn't issue another royalty or anything like that. Um, part of the transaction when Millennial bought the assets from Waterton, they granted that royalty. So um, Franco then just went and bought it from, from Waterton. Perfect. And I think uh, there's one last question, but uh, you can include it in it's sort of a, a wrap up here. And just for those that were wondering, the, a copy of this presentation is available on our website. Um, so if, if you would like a copy, it's available there. Um, but if you could just take us through um, the, the next steps, I know you went through it once, but really the next steps for the company, key catalysts, um, and what we can expect over the next about six to 12 months. Yeah. All right, so really the next one is the updated resource uh, for, for Delamar, okay? That's uh, including all of the stockpiles. So there's about 60 million tons that have already been mined and blasted and been oxidizing on surface uh, for a number of years. You know, we're lucky that Kinross, anything that wasn't above 0.85, um, they left it in the stockpile. So that's really the next major catalyst. Uh, then we will start the exploration program at Wildcat. Um, then it will be the mine plan of operations. 
uh, submission um, for Delamar, which is a major, major catalyst. Okay. That is, you know, really, that's just a lot of significant de-risking and basically a feasibility study. And, and really, that's what the major companies want to look for is they want to see that mine plan. Uh, and then in 2024, it'll be a, a really exciting kind of growth story and a lot of exploration done at Wildcat and Mountain View. Uh, and we hope to have a feasibility study out for Delamar by the end of 24, by the end of next year. Perfect. And uh, uh, just one last question popped in there I, as you're doing that. But generally speaking, from a cost perspective, the PEA, are, are we seeing things stabilize a bit? Is the inflation still pressuring? Um, you know, just any comment on that? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Delamar put their set there, the PF, we put the Delamar PFS out uh, in the peak of inflation. So we have seen costs come down a little bit. Not a lot, but the costs are definitely, definitely coming down. Um, you know, fuel prices are, we believe that are coming down, you know, 30% of your operating costs is fuel. Okay. So if we can minimize fuel and lower fuel consumptions, uh, uh, that'll, that'll help uh, significantly. But the cost of AMFO and cyanide have, have come down quite a bit as well. Perfect. Um, and I think that uh, wraps it up for today. If we didn't get any questions, we will uh, certainly get back to you. Uh, but for the sake of time, uh, thank you so much for joining. Obviously, it's a very exciting day for us with the PEA being released and then a very rich year in terms of catalysts uh, and, and near-term milestones. So thank you so much. A copy of this will be on the website uh, shortly once the recording is done. Uh, Jay, any final words to leave us with? No, I'd just like to thank everyone very much for, for joining and uh, we'll continue to put our head down and, and to really consistently deliver on, on what we say we're going to do and, and really truly build off, off of what we started with because this is just scratching the surface. And as I mentioned, we wanted to show the market how robust these economics are and how we're going to systematically continue to grow this. And, you know, it's noted that every 10%, adds $50 million. So uh, with that, thank you very much for, for listening and, and feel free to reach out with any further questions.